Time to turn the music off. Hello, Collar. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Batman Bunker! We got some calling, Brad, and a note to call this number. <laughs> yes! Bunker! This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And. Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a Goose prank. No, this is Forrest Nash, host of. Uh huh, sure thing, Goose. Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian, what do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says... Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Forest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Grace, oh my god, it's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe family friendly place good for you friend i'm glad you're keeping safe and busy thank you oh i'm really living the american dream <laughs> here in my business <laughs> you must really really love your work oh i do my small business really is my whole world What's your small business? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Ponte's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponte, no! No free ads! <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponte's did save Virginia. 
I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure are, caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly, we planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight, to take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually, but, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst! Stay calm, Eugene. We'll get you out of this. Carm! I'm about to die a virgin! Listen, Eugene. Breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah, sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Uh, looks like Brad broke her heart. Wonder what she'd have done with all that maze maze stuff. Any luck? For Eugene? Yes. For Barbara, no. Brad canceled the date. So Barbara left her tickets and a map for the maze maze behind. Ugh, Barbara can do better than... Never mind. Let's save the kid. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. 
Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Go left. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I went left, then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Go backwards. Oh, God. Why didn't I just invite her over? I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Go left. Oh, this wasn't how tonight was meant to go. I just wanted some love. Oh. Oh, there's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. Go right. I can't run much more. I just passed a cordon silo. Didn't see anything else. Go right. my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, old told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. And thank you for calling in Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... I threw it out the window earlier today. Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, 
but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks, here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Of all the songs to request, why'd it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again, Murphy. Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is twenty twenty, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of. Came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but oh, oh, goddamn! I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He. Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. <clears throat> oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. 
Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah. I got a little flashlight. Looks like old cans, bottles, and newspaper. What does it say on the newspaper? It's uh, the Henderson headline. Go to recycling. Recycling? Got it. Come on, Catherine. The plants for something else. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? <laughs> do you hear anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my... Put the receiver up to the lid. Turn it up. Catherine, go to the crusher. Open the Henderson container. You just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Teddy, this isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. 
Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade-A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Ugh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show well folks hearing that reminds me that every vote matters that ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows you mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows yeah sure let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote caller on line one hello caller you're live on the stream with me Forrest Nash <sighs> Uh, hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I... I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! I mean, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the closet. Okay, I'll...
you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just whistling night, man. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, I'm hit! Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house, and... Of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in today. Force, listen. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things that are just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Are you okay? Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? A mentor? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. This might work. Hey, 
You find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found our friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer? <sighs> Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then it's part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad? Scott? Cynthia? Ugh, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go to Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, 
We're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go! Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got caught. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait, get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. What was that? It's the whistling man! Drive! Now! Let me go! Let me go! Let's go! Just drive! Oh my god. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? <sighs> I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Thank <laughs> you.